My face is so burnt. Hello. Welcome to session 17 of the Little Wolf Knits podcast. I'm Brianna and I will be your host today. Um, I am coming to you from South Jersey, the Jersey Shore, as you could probably tell from my sunburn. I'm sitting here. My sister Sophia is right off screen. She Hi. is the maker behind LW Graphico crafting some pretty cool earrings while we're talking, so you might hear her chiming in. Uh, Nanny's here, she just walked downstairs. You wanna say hi to the people, Nan? You guys know Nanny if you've watched before. If you haven't, go back and check out a few videos. Hi, just a quick hello. Uh, what, are you, what are you knitting on? Tell the people. It's upstairs, I'm making a poncho. Oh, maybe you could bring it down later. Um, I wanted to get on and film a quick video because we have a full day of Easter egg decorating and earring making and some other things to do. Um, but I have so many finished objects, some of which were gifts for Sophia, so I want to film them before they go home with her forever. You're my birthday. <laughs> they know about your birthday. Uh, so some of them you've seen before, some of them are brand new, and let's just jump into it because I have a little bit of shop news at the end. One of my FOs I'm wearing, so I can talk about this one first. The lighting is not great. We have overhead lighting on because Sophia is Sorry. working on her earrings, but we'll make do. So you've seen this before. It is finished. It is blocked. I've worn it maybe four times already in the week <laughs> that I finished it. Uh, this is my Paloma sweater by Espas Trico. Um, and I think I made the second size. It is in my prongs colorway on my sunfish base and my buoy Surrey alpaca um, held double. It has this really cool twisted rib detail down the arm. Um, I'm pretty obsessed with it. I did a, a nice long collar. I think I knit it to pattern. Usually I add more length, but I, I don't think I did. I think I knit it exactly to pattern. Oh, I, I did add, I think, an extra inch on the sleeves is what I ended up doing, to be honest, but everything else was to pattern. Um, I used a US 6 4.0 millimeter needle, my Chiagu's, I'm pretty sure, and I'm clearly obsessed with it. I've gotten Positive feedback from Sophia and my mom that they would also like a Paloma, so you might be seeing a few more of these coming soon. <laughs> Easter is right around the corner. Yes, I can do one in a few days for sure. Um, but that is my first FO. My second FO is something you've seen already, and it's finished. Oh, Nan, you want to come show? Nanny's going to come show what she's working on. You like that. It's pretty. Right. You can't tell the color. But yeah, you can. You can see it. Green and black. So what are you working on? What, is, what Do you know the pattern name? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a poncho. You probably found it online, right? No. You have a book? It might have been from a book. I've, it's an old, old pattern. If I can find it, I'll link it down below. Um, where the rest of my information will be, because I didn't even tell you that. And who I am. Uh, well, do you know what the yarn is, Nan? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. What size it. needles are you using? That's something to... I think, I, what do they look like, a six? No, no they're either. probably bigger than that, no? no. You should say it on them. No. Uh, US 9, 5.5 millimeter. I thought it was sm smaller. <laughs> it's just because you're, like you're used to bigger yarn and bigger needles. Um, speaking of which, knowing who I am, uh, I'm clearly the Little Wolf Knits. You can find me on Instagram at the Little Wolf. You can find me on Ravelry with all of my designs. Um, I am the Little Wolf. And my website is the Little Wolf Knits.myshopify.com. And I'll talk a little bit more about the website after I show you the rest of my stuff. So you just want to howl every time you say your name? Just me? No, just you. Okay. Do you guys howl every time I say my name? Um, 
Anyway, so you've seen this, you have not seen it finish, and I am happy to report that I am pretty sure I <laughs> used the same yarn, the whole blanket. If you watched last episode, there was a bit of a debacle here. Um, if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go back and watch it because it was pretty funny. But I finished Sophia's throw. It is a granny stripe, granny square, granny rectangle blanket. Um, and it is very large and in charge. It is a good size. It covers both of us easily. Did you intend to make it that big or is, was it like meant to be that like was the pattern that big or I didn't use a pattern a big, I just oh. was like I'm going to make a big granny rectangle why it's a good size right it's huge and I love it um it is I talked about it last week it is Bernat home mix and I used the colorway in the clouds I don't know where I got beige I'm pretty sure one of them said beige but I think they're all the same colorway and if they're not we can't tell the difference but this is it it is huge she has <laughs> used it, it's heavy too. So it's a good, even though it's holy, it's a good uh, weight, right? So? Yeah. <laughs> so she's used it, this is for her new apartment that she just moved into. She got a really pretty color couch um, and I think it will look wonderful. So obviously that's why I chose the colors. We were down the shore, so I gave it to her, and she immediately took it out, and she's been sleeping with it every night. The funny thing is that Rocco sleeps with her and, like, curls up next to her. Well, because of the holes, um, Rocco's ears were, like, poking through the holes like this while he was sleeping. And then a few times, I actually got nervous, I'm not going to lie. Um, a few times, if you, like, went up to him and he turned his head, his nose would like poke through and he'd get kind of stuck so I got a little nervous. Well, I think that he liked it though because he could see through it. So if anybody walked in the room- He could see who was coming. He would see exactly who was coming and didn't realize that he was still under the blanket. So then he'd like try to run out but he was stuck inside the blanket and it was just the cutest thing ever. That was like a little fishing net. It was cute. So FO number two. What do we think Soph? I use a crochet hook, a Q maybe. Go check it out. The last video I talked about it. Love it. I'm going to say a 10, no! out, 10 out of 10 on this one. There's some I just had a little bit of a disaster. It's fine. Sorry. Some things happening over in Earring Central. And I have all of these blankets. Yes, I said all of these blankets in my. Is that better? Oh, thank you. In my Jumbo Market basket. My olive one. Um, so FO number three. I forgot I had this as an FO. Y'all have seen this before since the beginning of the year. It is done. All the ends are woven in. It's not blocked yet, and I definitely want to block it. But I, it's done, so I want to show it to you. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Sophia, a little help here. I meant just like in the enthusiasm department. Oh. oh. It needs some of those editing. So this is it. It is large. Two of us could fit in here. It goes to the floor right it now. It is. I'm five feet tall. And I'm five four. I'm not five feet tall. I'm five four, four eleven. Five five. And it's it's up to my chin and it's pooling at my feet. And it's bit. not blocked yet. So I think it's going to grow a little bit in length. So this was my, if you're just tuning in for the first time ever, this is a bad podcast to watch, so go back and watch a different one first. Um, this is my Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Advent Minis held double with uh, a skein of mohair in my birthday suit, which is my bare mohair. For most of it, you will see, most of it bare mohair. The very last, I only used four skeins of mohair, um, even though I should have used five, right, because 24 minis is equivalent to about five skeins. Um, so the overage on some of the mohair skeins, I got to the end of my fourth skein and I only had a mini and a half of the main blanket left. I had one more mini for the edge. Um, 
And I was like, I'm not winding up another skein of mohair to use like a fifth of it. That's silly. So I just went and I picked up mohair scraps that I had and I had cheeky leftover from my Spellman sweater. I talked about it before. You could see it on Ravelry and on my Instagram. And I just used it for the last colorway. You could see um, the last few rows of this colorway, but then the last colorway was a little whiny anyway. So it was perfect. And then I did an applied eye cord. The first time I've done that to the entire blanket. This edge is like not super clean. I guess it's pretty good. That's where I cast on and ended. I think the rest of the corners came out really well. Oh no. <laughs> um, I did, I watched a YouTube tutorial where you basically knit an extra row without doing like the pick up and increase. So you knit the extra row and then you work the next I cord row into the same corner. So sort of like what you do with a crochet square. Um, and I really like how the corners came out. I did it all the way around and I held, instead of holding mohair with the eye cord, I don't know why, I just held, um, I had some serious black laser left over from my Stephen West exploration station shawl. So I grabbed that for the border and it's done. What do you think, Nan, Soph? Love it. Very pretty. It's Cute, so eh? soft. Let's see it. It's so soft. What? You finished? I finished it. Let's see if I could go through the colorways. This is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Number four, Privet Drive. Letters from No One. No Post on Sundays. Happy Birthday, Harry. Keeper of the Keys. First Year's Follow Me. Sorting Hat. This is like Halloween and Troll in the Dungeon. I don't know which is which. Um... Again, I, I kind of don't remember which is which. I think this is fluffy and through the trap door. Night to H3, not you, not Hermione, not me, not Hermione, you. Um, this is danger lies before you, safety lies behind. The man with two faces, maybe Sorcerer's Stone. I kind of got lost back here. Something with the final, the Great Hall. Something about a final feast in the Great Hall. Um, something here. This is a boy, because it was white with um, Gryffindor speckles and black. And then, and his owl, I think was this black one. Or maybe backwards, I don't really know. But it's done, I love it. It's gonna go on our couch. I'm going to block it. When I get home. Oh, and I worked on, I should say, I've shown this before, but I had a charm from um, a club I did last year, my Deathly Hollows Yarn and Charm Club, and this is an uh, invisibility cloak charm. I have a few of them left in the shop. I also have some resurrection stones and a few elder wands left. Um, and once they are, those are from Bunny and Tooth. Once they are gone, they are gone. So if you want one, get them now. I know some folks have messaged me that they got two, but they missed out on one. There are maybe three or four, five maybe left of each one. Still. So grab those. Those are in my shop under the accessory section. There's a charms and they should be right in there. One, two, three. Those are FO. Three FOs, you've seen all of those. Fourth, I'm calling it an FO because I talked about it last time. Here is my balloon sweater for Sophia that I knit her for Christmas. Aw, so if it's all wrinkly. Oops. <laughs> and how I talked about it. How is that possible? I talked about it last time because you had it crumbled up. Yarn wrinkles? Wow, look at our sweaters. I know, they look so similar. We match. Um, so. I talked about this last time. I knit her the balloon sweater. She wanted some length added. I added some length. She wanted some length taken off. So I took some length off. Um, this is my sister's on Sunfish held with driftwood on my buoy base, which is a Surrey alpaca. I modded a little bit and just added some baubles on the sleeves, which she really wanted. And I think they turned out cute. She said that I think it's her favorite part. I love baubles. Big baubles, girl. 
Um, and I didn't know if you were going to be able to see the bobbles when they're it's on, but you do, right? It doesn't yeah. drape over it too much. So I took off about four inches, and she wanted it a little bit looser, so I was inspired by this. I did this with the US 6, a 4.0 millimeter, so I decided to stay on that for the body ribbing. I think the rest of the ribbing was done in a three or a four. Um, I have it on Ravelry. If you don't have access to Ravelry or you just don't wanna look it up, you can always message me and I will look it up and share it with you. Um, so I finished and then I put this little tag on that my aunt got me for Christmas last year. Oh, upside down. Did you put one on my blanket? I put one on your blanket too. So it's the little wolf knits. Um, cute little leather tag. Probably full leather. But it's done, so if you want to throw it on. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is FO number four. I'm counting it as an FO because I ripped it out and it was Surrey and fingering held double. So ripping that out was a full-time job. Then I had to separate the strands. And then I had to roll them up, and then I had to re it. Every single person I talked to was like, wow, you're a good sister. I would not have done that. Okay, but to be fair, I asked for it longer than her sweaters. Because she makes hers, like, kind of, like, high-waisted pant height. And I'm a solid five inches taller than her. So. Obviously, I'm making you a different size. It's going to be longer than my sweaters. Ignore my shorts, but how cute is this? Look, you see the bobbles perfectly, and it's a perfect length. Oh, my shorts are horrible, but I'm so much kind of mad. Not even in frame. Okay, but look at our sweaters. She has fashion. She has grace. She's hand knit designs. <laughs> okay, we're done. Sophia watches a lot of RuPaul. It's actually TikTok. Oh, sorry. TikTok life, I don't know about. Um, the ooh, ooh, two dollars. One, two, three, four. Fifth FO, you haven't seen this one yet. It's a big one. I mean, it's not big, it's like literally small, but I'm super excited about this. She did. I, I did, Nan. She didn't know she was making earrings. Um, this is my... Test Knit for the Star Bay Beanie by Michael Sean. This is a gift for my sister, even though I really wanted it. So this is um, skinny dipping on my 420 base and surf on my cloud, which is my mohair lace weight. Um, and the swatch, the cool thing about this hat is that your swatch ends up being used as a patch on the front of the brim. The brim is a double brim and you fold it up so it's nice and thick. And then you do a really cool like embroidered astrological sign, Sophia's, in Aries. Her birthday was this past Wednesday. Um, I made the smaller size, it comes with two sizes. Oh, so if I have to cut that, <laughs> the string in the top of it. <laughs> Um, this is it. It's super cute. We're a small head family. Super warm and fuzzy. Do you like it? I love it. I love the color of it too. I really like this color. Maybe I'll use, I wonder if I have enough to make a matching one. I have to weigh my yarn and see how much I have left. You should do like inverted. So it would match. Oh, uh, like do a light hat with the dark mohair? Yeah. You won't see it. So like because the way this is contrasted. So this is the cool thing about this hat. You use a dark yarn with a light mohair. So that um, you see the string of the silk running through. And it looks like uh, stars in the sky, right? That's sort of how it was inspired. The cool thing about this hat is you knit it. You knit the whole thing and then you flip it inside out. So there's no purling on the hat. Um, if you use a light yarn and a dark mohair. <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry to everyone. 
who just <laughs> witnessed that. I have my phone, I forgot my tripod, so I have my phone propped up on a bunch of books. And Sophie is cleaning up her earring stuff, and it must have like shook the table enough that I forgot. Don't blame me. It's not me. It's a stupid ass phone. So if you use light yarn, dark mohair, you won't see the silk like this so much because the mohair fuzz will make it pretty solid. So you can do it. It'll just have a different look. But this is my Star Babe beanie. It is the Corvus kit. I have this kit in the shop and I think I have five other kits. Um, so I have a pink one, orange with a, a rusted spokes, green is Corvus. I have a blue like a navy with a slight silvery blue, Edhara and eggplant and Marvelous, which is the original kit, and then Sirius Black and Fog, which is a nice, just like neutral kit. Those are all in the shop under Star Babe Kits. Check them out. On the homepage, like the opening picture image scrolls through that. Um, otherwise, you can just go to the top yarn, yarn kits, and find it there. I love it. I, th I wove in all my ends. Oh, I think I forgot about this one. I have to do this. I wove in the other ends because when I was originally doing this, I, I was late at night. It was a day. Uh, it was a not good day. And I <laughs> did Pisces and didn't realize it until I blocked it. It was wet. I sent a picture and they were like, oh, Pisces. And I was like, so I had to cut all the mohair off and then embroider it wet on the hat. So FO number one, two, three, four, five FOs. What a week. Getting things off the needles, which is good. Um, Cause I have one new thing that went on the needles and I'm going to add one more, but then that's it. Two projects feels like a good amount of projects. And then I have some designs I've been thinking about. And one thing I'm testing that I have to start, which I'll talk about in a minute. So my first and only whip, true whip of the day, is in my Schitt's Creek bag by Lila Styles Me. She doesn't have this exact bag, um, but she does have similar fabric. She actually has an updated fabric with a few more sayings on it. It is all things Schitt's Creek, and I love it. Nanny loves Schitt's Creek. We all love Schitt's Creek. Yarn, I have a few different yarns for I'm doing a Schitt's Creek club oh. I know so in my Schitt's Creek bag is my scrappy I don't want to call it scrappy it's my advent from coast to coast yarn co her advent last year I'm using to make a dress inspired by cozy classic light by Jesse May I'm going to tweak it a little bit and I'm at this point, I originally thought I was going to do short sleeves and make it pretty long. But when I was doing the math, um, I should have enough to do long sleeves and then make it to like just above my knee, which I think is a really cute look. So that's what I'm gonna go for. But again, sort of just trying things out and experimenting because I have some things up my sleeve. So I just started this on maybe Thursday. Very recently just started this um, and wasn't working on it too much because I was doing the applied eye cord of my, my blanket Thursday and Friday. So I really worked on this yesterday. Um, this first colorway up here is Garland and then it moves into, I think, Bouche de Noel. And then down here, this third one is Cream Puff. I was originally thinking about doing a fading pattern and alternating rows while I faded into the next mini skein, but the way it's dyed, it feels smooth enough, at least for me. I mean, I can see where the new skein was joined, but I think it's a smooth enough fade that I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to do it straight. So those are the first three colors I am 
uh, done with the first set of raglan increases. I'm in the second section now. I'm hoping to finish that by today. And if I could put the sleeves on hold before we leave here today, so then when we get in the car, it's just body knitting, that would be cool. I don't think that's gonna happen. And if I'm still working on the raglan increases, that feels fine. So those three, then it goes into this colorway, which is eggnog. Oh, this is hard. Let's do it this way. It's on a short cord. So these three, and then it goes into eggnog, which is more of a, those tans and yellows. And then I'm thinking I'll probably split the sleeves when I'm on this or this. Um, and this is, I think, Rogala. I don't know if that's actually what this is. Um, if you go on Coast to Coast, Yarn Co's Instagram, all of her advent colors are in a highlight. It's really helpful for me when I'm making this dress. So I think sleeves will be split somewhere around here. And then I'm trying to debate. I think I'm going to do the sleeves. Oh, so I guess it doesn't really matter if I split for sleeves. Um, I'm going to do the sleeves first, and I'm going to use about 10 grams. I'll do the sleeves two at a time from the mini, so inside and outside, and I'll use about half of it, 10 grams, see how far I get, and then I'll save the other 10 grams for the body. I want to look at the stitch counts, and I think the stitch counts for two sleeves should be about similar to my stitch count for my body, and if that's the case, then I feel good enough to split it about halfway for each mini. And then once I'm done with the sleeves, I'll do the body. It should line up and match across the body and sleeves. And then once I start increasing for the hips and butt, which I have to do a little bit of math and think about, obviously the stripes will be a little bit smaller because it'll be a wider circumference, a larger circumference. So I think that the stripes will match pretty well. Um, they'll probably be a little wider up here, get a little narrower, um, and then maybe even get a little wider for the hips. I don't mind that. I think it'll look fine. Um, so that's what I'm working on. I'm using a US 5, which is, let me double check that. Yeah, a US 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter. Um, and I'm making the second size for this. And this buddy, I'm using my stitch markers from Sassafras Knits which I love. I think this is the Riptide set. And then my Progress Keeper. Let me see. My Progress Keeper, which I posted about yesterday, it is a little chocolate frosted donut with a seashell on it. And I'm thinking that this is going to be my signature charm in the shop. It's going out for as little gifts to a few people. Um, this year, but then I think after those go out, it's going to be listed in the shop. So keep an eye out for that one. Um, so the oven's almost done. Okay. Those are all the things I finished and I'm working on. I have one thing caked up and ready to go that I'm going to start very soon. Maybe once I finish these five minis. I, I caked up five minis for like a full skein. Um, and then maybe I'll cast this on and then sort of alternate back and forth. Just depending on what I feel like. So this is in my Songbird handmade cactus bag. Um, <laughs> Thanks. So this is a cactus bag by Songbird handmade. This is a large, I think, sweater bag drawstring bag. I have one, two, three, four, six skeins of yarn in here and still a good amount of room. I could fit seven skeins in here, but I don't need seven skeins, so I don't. And I have my lemon tart in here by Tuft Woolens. I had my pink peppermint in the Coast to Coast bag. It was my advent yarn. And I had an orange spice cake, I think, in the advent blanket. Oh, so good. I'm sneezing now. 
So this is um, yarn for my Comfort Fade Cardi. It will be my second one, and I was inspired to do it with the Grocery Girls Knit Along that they're doing, and a fade that I listed in my shop, the Sandy Fade, um, a few months ago. Two months ago, maybe? A month or... Oh, who knows? Time's weird. Um, and I really loved it, and so I wanted to make a sweater out of it. So I dyed myself up some yarn, and that's what I'm doing. So the first color... The fade actually is a five color fade, but I chose five of them. So it start, it could be a six color fade from um, Sandy Cheeks to S'mores, Bonfire, Barnacle, Seashell, Seaside, but I just took the darker four. I'm definitely going to make a sweater out of S'mores. Um, sorry, I left it out. So this is bonfire it's like a creamy tan base with brown and rusty copper sort of speckles it's the first color and it will fade into barnacle which is a little bit more of a brown base um green speckles brown and that coppery rust i think it fades really well and then two skeins of that then the third skein the third colorway, so I actually, I messed this up a little bit, if I'm being honest. This has two more speckles than it's supposed to have, um, but it's fine, you'll get the picture. So this is seashell, it's the same base. It has pink, orange, rust, green, uh, copper, plum, purple, mauvey sort of speckles. Um, I accidentally added teal. I just mixed up my pans. Um, I act, or I wasn't thinking. I accidentally added teal, which isn't supposed to be in here. Um, but it's fine for my sweater. So I have two skeins of seashell modified a little bit. And then one skein of the darkest color in the fade, which is seaside. It's a darker brown, and it just has orange, rust, teal and chocolate speckles and I really like this color too so if you look at the fade let's see if I can hold this otherwise I might get Sophia oh no there we go <gasps> look at it so yeah pretty right now look <laughs> pretty fade right it, and it's great. I think it's a good neutral because I could wear it brown. I could wear it with black. There are enough speckles that you could wear it with the pop any color. I could wear it with green. Um, you could wear it with burnt orange. You could definitely wear it with white and jeans, which is mostly what I wear. So perfect. I will be casting this on very soon. And I know I already did this project and I got gauge with the US 6 of 4.0 millimeters, so that's nice. I don't have to swatch again. Benefits of doing a project twice. Making sure these are in the correct order so I don't pull them because I would do that. Okay, so that is getting cast on soon. Otherwise, I recently got chosen, aka told Laura, um, she had no choice but to choose me for the Captiva crop, her new design um, that was using my yarn. I like the wine, not the label. Um, and so I told her I wanted to try and crochet a top because I can do a little bit of crochet. So I'm going to crochet it in my, what? In my Alexis Rose colorway love that journey for me and I'm gonna skein those up I have two I already dyed at the house so I'll just wind those up and swatch and we'll see how that goes because I've never done crochet like this before um just a little side note I started to crochet at some point and I asked her to help me and she told me no because she doesn't crochet. She just knits. I don't really know enough crochet to teach anyone how to crochet. Which Learn is with me. why this is going to be very interesting. 
So that's coming soon. Otherwise, some shop news. Like I said, Palm Your Knits kits are in the shop. I remade, um, I restocked, I should say, the donut charms that go along with those kits. And there may be about 10 left. When they're gone, they're gone. I'm not making them. The kits will then just be available without the extra gift. So if you want one, order them. If you order multiple kits in one order, I've only been giving one charm because I'm not sure if people wanted two of the same exact charm. Um, but if you do, I'm happy to, to, to give you one with each set that you order. Just leave me a note, send me an email. Um, email is the best way, thelittlewolfknits at gmail.com. And I will gladly give you one in each of your kits that you order. Um, I'm also not tracking, like, if you already ordered one in a different order, I'm just going to give you another charm. Um, because that's too much work. Mostly just if you're ordering multiple kits in one order, I'm only giving one charm for now. But I'm happy to do something different. Those are in the shop. Star Babe kits, like I talked about for this hat, which is coming out in April, are also in the shop. Um, another kit that's in the shop is the Ontario Pebbles shawl with my friend Darian of Knitting by Darian. That is in testing and will be released the end of April, I think about a month out. A little less than a month from now. Um, around Earth Day, um, and it is a three skein fade, beautiful fade, inspired by a picture she took on my Opti base, so that is in the shop as a pre-order, um, lots of kits, lots of kits, um, there will be kits, so I guess I'll say this first, some of the yarn clubs that are in the shop are closing, um, which means you will not be able to get the colorway again. I'm not guaranteeing those colorways will come back. Some of them I want to come back, but I don't know when or how or what that's going to look like. Um, so I still haven't listed any of the January colorways. I think I'm going to list Peach Pit and I like the peach sauce in the shop coming up in April. I'm not going to list Niagara Falls yet because that's available in the Palm Your Knits cocktail kit. Um, and then February colorways, I'll sort of think about again because there's still some available. So Chicago will probably come back at some point. Um, the Lane Kim eggless egg salad colorways, we have about eight charms left, I'm saying off the top of my head. Um, yarn and charm kits, once those are gone, they're gone. I don't know if that colorway will come back. It was very February warm romantic colorway. Um, the third month of Gilmore Girls, there are a few Chicago, I think there are two or three Chicago charms, yarn and charms left. Um, and same for Badlands, I think there's two yarn and charms left. Um, and those are ready to die and go out to you. The third Gilmore Girls Club, Paris Geller, um, spring break inspired. The main skein is girls in bikinis. The mini skein is banana eating contest. Those just went out in the mail um, with the charm from Manda of Little Bitty Delights. I'm going to show you a sneak peek of the charm. It's so good. Um, if you've seen this episode, I'm sure you can guess what this charm will be based on my colorways. Uh oh. Um, and we have about eight extras of these. These two months, we were able to get a few more of the eggless egg salad and these. But from now on, I don't think we will have as many available leftovers. So if you want one, make sure you get in on them. This is the charm. Uh, for Paris Geller. So, have you, you haven't seen this episode, right? I don't watch one at all. Look at this charm. Banana. It's a banana. So they're on spring break and like no one's, they're all just like drinking a lot. So there's not a lot of like food or eating. And Paris and Rory don't drink that much. So they're like starving mm -hmm. and not loving spring break. And they're down at the pool and there's a banana eating contest. <laughs> so Paris is like, oh my God, real food and runs. And then like the next thing you see her running away. And she's like, oh, forgive me for thinking a banana eating contest was actually about eating bananas. 
<laughs> so that's that charm. There, are, like I said, I think maybe eight or nine, eight left. Um, and those are still in the shop. All of those are under yarn clubs. There are two, one, there's one um, Alexis Rose hat with the feathers charm left um, in the shop. So grab that once that's done. It'll be done for at least a few months to be able to just buy it at your leisure. It will be available in kits, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and there are a few more days, like three more days, to purchase the, I'm trying very hard not to connect with people right now, colorway inspired by David Rose. It is very David Rose. I have um, a sneak peek available. If you wanna see it, send me a DM and I'll send it to you. Otherwise, it's gonna be going up in the shop probably by the time you see this. Um, this sneak peek will be in that listing and it will close on the 31st. So if you want either of those skeins or charms, get them now because once they're gone, they're gone. I'm not going to remake the charms. Um, at this point, the only thing that will be in the shop is if there are any leftovers left once they are gone, once the, the listings are closed. Um, that being said, Laura's crop top, the Captiva crop, was designed with the first skein from the Schitt's Creek Club, which was, I like the wine, not the label. I'll be making mine in Love That Journey for me, which is closing soon. So what Laura and I decided to do is put together kits for the Captiva crop, um, and the three colorway options that will be available are the first three colorways of the Schitt's Creek Club. So I like the wine, not the label, if you're more of a David Rose, um, love that journey for me if you're a little bit more of an Alexis. And then the third option, I'm trying very hard not to connect with people right now, is just a really fun colorway if you want to jump in on more of a neutral palette. Um, I think it's going to be really good. So those three will only be available during that kit. And then uh, once that kit closes, maybe a few months later, they'll come back in the shop. So if you want to grab them, grab them now as the yarn and charm set. If you miss out on those, they'll be available as the Captiva crop kit. Um, and then otherwise you'll just have to wait for a bit. <sighs> I think that's all the things. We have a few things coming to the shop um, on the first. So within this week, um, the next Gilmore Girls Club, I'm super excited about super excited about because we're starting to move into some of Rory's boys. So we'll have Dean for this next April, we'll have Jess in May, and then we'll have Logan in June, which I'm, I'm just really excited about that lineup. Some really fun charms Manda and I have been coming up with, so keep an eye out for those. Um, from the Open Road Club, we're working past South Dakota, we're working down into uh, Wyoming, up through Jackson Hole, Grand Teton, Yellowstone, up into Glacier National Park, Montana, and then Canada. So keep an eye out on those. Um, those had been a yarn and charm option with Sassafras Knits. Moving forward, we're not going to be offering a charm, at least for now, for the next few months. They might pop back as a special, so it'll just be the yarn club. And what I'm going to do for that is actually do a, like, how I die behind the scenes video when I create that club each month. So it's not going to be a surprise anymore. You're going to see um, that yarn and how it was created on my channel here. And then you'll see the sneak peek in the shop. Um, and then the, par the Gilmore Girls and Schitt's Creek colorways will still continue to be a surprise. The, the next month for Schitt's Creek is really good. It's a Moira reference. So if, do you know what it is? Did I tell you what it is? I don't think so. Okay, I'm I'll remind me, I'll tell you. I'm super excited about it. But that's what we have coming in the shop. It's a lot of stuff. Oh, oh, one more thing. Oh, this is really exciting. So in the next few days, I will be listing Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets July Advents. There are going to be three options um, that I've laid out. One is a full 30-day July Advent. Um, with the option to add on a full skein if you want. And I'll, I'll walk you through a little bit how I set this up. So there's a 30-day 
advent it will include two gifts one from me one from another maker and you get to choose your harry potter house your hogwarts house um, to specialize that package um there's also 16 mini skein option and what i decided to do was give you the choice of do you want 16 all of the variegated and speckled colorways or 16 of the tonal colorways how i'll do the full advent is i'll choose about 15 pictures from the book slash movie right i i like to pull scenes from the book but the visuals i usually take from the movie um that sort of span chronologically throughout the story each picture will have two colorways based on it one will be a variegated tonal one will be a solid um that's the same thing i did last year and i really like how it came out but this year then for the 16 skein so the half advent i'm going to give you the choice do you want all the variegateds or do you want all the tonals if you're like oh i really just want a mix so maybe like the first half of the month or the second half of the month Send me an email and I can do it. There were just too many. It was getting overwhelming with the different options. Um, and for that, again, you'll get two gifts, one from me and one from another maker, and you'll still be choosing your Hogwarts house. The third option is a full skein, um, and you can get it one of two ways. You can just get the skein by itself, so as an add-on for either of the other advents that you get to open on July 31st, which is Harry Potter's birthday, obviously. Um, and if... You, you don't get one of the other advents, or I guess if you want extra gifts, it will be the same gifts. You can get the full skein and gifts option. So you will still get the full skein and two gifts, one for me, one from another maker, and you're choosing your Hogwarts house. For all three of those, you have the option. Um, if you don't want to choose your house, you can choose sort me, and the sorting hat will sort you into a house. Um, and you will open it in July and see what you get. I'm really, really excited about the July advent. It's the first time I'm doing this. Um, and I think it, I don't know, it's a good time of year to do that and treat yourselves. I think people are getting restless, being home, vaccines are rolling out, people are starting to get excited. I think it's nice to have something mid-year um, to look forward to and sort of treat yourself to. And then in December, it opens me up to do my Schitt's Creek Advent, which is going to work a similar sort of way that there'll be a full Advent, half Advent, and then a full skein option. I'm super excited about this. And that will be up in the shop very soon. Maybe even by the time this goes up. So go check it out. Um, if you order anything with your advent, don't order anything with your advent because you're not going to get it until June when the advent ship out. I guess if you wanted, I could, if you ordered a yarn, club i could hold it until june but i would say just place them as separate orders the advents um shipping is already included so yeah just go ahead do that um i think that's all that i have for now keep your eye out there's a lot of cool things coming in the shop yarns charms i talked about some other thing that I might be thinking about. Anything else, Soph? Anything you could think of? No? Nan, anything else? No. Okay. So with that, we will sign off. I'll go tend to my sunburn. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Have a good day. I don't know when you'll see this. Maybe today. Maybe tomorrow. Um, and until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Bye. Okay, say bye. 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 <laughs> Rocco does not like that word. We're just kidding, Rocco. Come here, come here.